Please stand as you are able for the gospel reading according to Mark. And it reads, Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages, villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone, if anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Great and mighty God, we are so thankful and humbled that the same power that conquered the grave lives in each and every one of us now. And so God, through that power, we ask that you would just speak to us, that we might know you in the fullness of your power, through Christ, in Christ, and because of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. So while our scripture has already been read, I want to revisit and highlight verses 27 through 29 for our focus this morning, which reads, Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. But who do you say that I am? You are the Messiah. For the next few moments, and they will be few as my entire worship team is timing me right now to make sure I stay within our boundaries, I want us to simply engage this text around the sermonic title, Do You Know? As we enter into this sermon time, I, I want to acknowledge that today, September 11th, marks the anniversary of the most horrific and tragic terrorist event this country has ever experienced. For some, this day brings about deep memories of loss, fear, and destabilizing chaos. Today, we remember lives lost, and we hold in our hearts the families across this country who continue to mourn and live in the shadow of such devastation. And we pray for those who continue to ask questions of life, humanity, and faith. And while our personal daily experiences can by no means be compared to that which changed the landscape of our country 17 years ago, the fact remains that many of us in here today have entered with our own questions of life and faith many of which have brought us to Candler in one way or another, be it as a student, staff, or faculty member. Today we gather in this sacred space, carrying our own cares, dealing with our own chaos, and navigating our own concerns. And God meets us here 
and the wisdom of this narrative of Jesus asking one seemingly simple question, who do you say that I am? Right. Here in the ideological center of the Gospel of Mark, we see Jesus and the disciples on a journey, and Jesus uses this journey time to inquire about his identity. Now, we all know that when Jesus poses a question in the Gospels, there is indeed a lesson behind it. And while we will not treat the fullness of this lesson today, I will leave that to my friend David Lewicki to do on Thursday. It is important for us to acknowledge that there was a greater purpose behind this inquisition. But for today, I want us to just rest in the moment of Jesus' question. And so he asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? And they respond, John the Baptist and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. The, the answer the disciples give from the crowd's account are sensible. In reality, much of Jesus' ministry had clearly evoked the legacy of these individuals, so these answers, while incorrect, really weren't far-fetched. And so then Jesus turns the question to a more personal nature. And he asked, but who do you say that I am? Now understand, he's asking this of the disciples. These are the very individuals who have journeyed with him consistently. They, they have not only witnessed, but also participated in some of his miraculous works. They have spent intimate time with Jesus. They've talked with him, eaten with him, and been in his presence from the day he called him. And now they move through Caesarea Philippi, headed toward Jerusalem, research the significance of this location a little bit later. And Jesus asks them, but who do you say that I am? He was no longer interested in what the crowd had to say. He, he wasn't satisfied in, in the spectator version. He wanted to hear from the ones he handpicked to walk with him. Right. These are the men he has chosen. He's training them. He's equipping them. And eventually he's going to send them out to tell others about who he is. He's going to send them to go and witness to the ends of the earth. It is absolutely paramount at this point that they know who Jesus is is that they know Jesus's identity. And so he asked, but who do you say that I am? Brothers and sisters, I believe this narrative is not only speaking about the disciples, but it is also speaking to each of us today, as many of us in this room are here on a journey. We are here as a result of being called by God, handpicked, if you may, on a journey of faith with Jesus. We have spent deep spiritual time with Jesus. We've committed our lives to following him. We are here being trained as ministerial leaders, preparing to go out into the world to share the good news of the gospel. Gospel. And today, Jesus, the Jesus of our journey, asks us, who do you say that I am? Essentially, Jesus is asking, do you know me? Yeah. After all of the intimate devotional time, after all of the places I've taken you, after all of the divine acts I've performed in your life and the lives of those around you, do you know who I am? Today, when we are reminded of national crisis, Jesus is asking, who do you say that I am? Do you know me? Do you know who I am in your life and the routineness of your life? Do you know who I am when that routine gets turned upside down? Do you know who I am when this journey starts to seem a little rough? Do you know who I am when I lead you into the unfamiliar? Who do you say that I am? Do you know who I am when the world around you seems to have gone straight up crazy? Do you know who I am when you walk into seminary and it looks nothing like you imagined? Do you know who I am when your faith walk meets sacrifice and struggle? Who do you say that I am? Yeah. Do you know who I am when your patience runs thin but I still call you to love? Do, do you know who I am when you experience loss and grief? Do you know who I am when you're tired and overwhelmed? When you've got papers due, family at home, a job to work, assignments to read, people to manage, deadlines to meet, and all of it seems impossible and completely unreasonable. Who do you say that I am? Do you know me? He asked them. And Peter, known for speaking first, answers, You are the Messiah. You are 
the Messiah for simple words, yet infinitely significant and profound. This, this is the point the author has been building up to for the last eight chapters of Mark. Jesus is now named the Messiah, the anointed one. But, but how did Peter know this? Up until now, Jesus has not done anything Messiah-like in Mark's gospel. Yet Peter proclaims, you are the Messiah, you are the anointed one, you are the Christ. And while we see verses later that Peter really didn't understand what it meant for Jesus to be the Messiah, he still makes the declaration. Yes, Peter still had much to learn about what Jesus as the Messiah really entailed. But here, in this moment, there is hope in the expectancy of Peter's response. Perhaps in that moment, Peter looked back over the journey and remembered all that Jesus had done. Perhaps just then he called to mind all of the lessons Jesus had taught them in the in-between moments of their ministerial walk. And then maybe he looked ahead to where they were going with expectancy of Jesus doing something even greater. And right there at the intersection of past experience and future expectation, Peter gets it. Perhaps not all of it, but a glimpse of it. And he knows that Jesus is more than a prophet. He knows that Jesus can't be limited to what the crowd perceives. He can't be measured by his miracles. He's greater than that. He is the Messiah, the anointed one, the liberator, the one who saves. Jesus asked, but who do you say that I am? And Peter responds, you are the Messiah. Notice this section of Mark begins with Jesus asking this question about identity before giving discipleship instructions. Jesus makes a point to inquire about their knowledge of him before teaching them how to follow him. Let this sequence be a roadmap for all of us who are called to follow Christ, that we must first know him, even if our finite minds can't fully comprehend Jesus' infinite divinity. We need to position ourselves to be able to proclaim who Jesus is in our lives and our community, because in reality, if we don't know him, we really can't follow him. And so, may your time here at Candler, in whatever capacity, deepen your personal knowledge of Christ. May your walk with Jesus open your eyes to not only his miracles, but his majesty. May you be so intimately connected that no matter the circumstances of your life, no matter the location of the faith journey that you're on, when Jesus asks you, who do you say that I am, your past experiences with him can intersect with your future expectations of him, and you can have a Peter-like moment and respond with all boldness. You are the Messiah. And this is not to say that you've got it all figured out and definitely not to say that you've reached some measure of perfect knowledge of Christ because Peter and the other disciples got it wrong before this encounter and got it wrong again immediately after. But in this moment, right. this proclamation plugs you into the divine power of Christ, positioning you to follow him in the fullness of your call and in the fullness of your faith. Jesus asks, but who do you say that I am? Can you answer? You are the Messiah. Do you know? God bless you. Amen. Yeah. Amen.